Thanks Alex. So we're going to take a look now at the improvements at assembly level in SOLIDWORKS 2014. Okay, so the first thing uh, I want to show you is the support for rotations in exploded views. So if we now add an exploded view to this assembly here, we'll just select these two uh, nuts and you'll see the option to rotate about each component origin is turned on and also the new rotational rings are displayed on the screen as well. So if we just drag those nuts out in a linear fashion, we can now just grab hold of those and rotate those around like so. We can grab hold of these two nuts and just do our normal sort of linear explode. Uh, and then if we take a look at this particular RAM here, if we select this item, we'll toggle off to rotate about the origin because we actually want to use a pivot point over here. We can drag the manipulator onto a circular edge and drop that down like so. It will give us the rotation ring. We can move that up in a particular angle and just grab hold of it a second time and pull that upwards like so. So very quickly we've created our exploded view. So if we just take a look at the animation there, you'll see the rotations are included for the nuts and that uh, hydraulic ram. So quite a nice update there to the exploded view section. So we'll just return to our full view here and we'll take a look at some of the other improvements we've seen. One of those is actually related to configurations, flexible sub-assemblies and the like. So here if I select a component, I can actually select any of the available configurations in that file directly from the flyout manager here. Uh, a really nice improvement. Historically we would actually have to go into a number of pages to get to those options. If we select the sub-assembly here, you can see that those options extend to sub-assembly configurations as well. So we could change that to the retracted configuration like so. If we take a look at the feature manager design tree over here, you'll see those options are available from here as well. So we could change that back to the free configuration. And in addition to that, you can also make sub-assemblies flexible directly from here as well. So if we turn that option on, you'll see we've now got a flexible sub-assembly there in our design. Now again that used to be quite a, a sort of drawn out process to actually specify those as flexible. Flexible sub-assemblies have had some work in terms of how they sold so if you do have multiple instances of the same flexible sub-assembly they now should behave uh, a lot more predictably. One of the other things that I want to talk about is the improvements at mirror component level. So if we take a look at this mirror component feature here the first thing you'll notice is the seed and the mirrored variant are now displayed in different colours. So pink is, is the seed and blue is the instance. Uh, so just a visualisation improvement there. Uh, but if we take a look in a little bit more detail, we've seen the expansion of support for different types of mates within uh, mirrored assemblies. So we can now support cam, hinge, linear coupler, path, symmetric, universal joints and width mates as well. So, you know, we've just seen the range of mates that are supported expanded out. One of the other things I want to talk about is uh, how the mirror component works. So I'm just going to, uh, just going to show the centres of mass here. And this section is mirrored over to the other side that we've seen. And you'll see that the centre of mass is perfectly line up uh, when we look at that in a normal two direction. If we unbalance or unsuppress another component in that section there, you'll see that we've got an extra component here. The centre of masses still line up because that's how the mirror component works, by, uh, by mirroring based on the centre of mass. But if we look at the actual component on the other side, you'll see it's, it's not where we want it to be as a result of the mirror using centre of mass. If we take a look at that mirror component uh, feature, what we can see now in 2014 is we have the addition to be able to specify how we're going to mirror. So the original behaviour would be centre of mass, but we can now toggle on the option to use the bounding box centre to mirror, which you'll see in the situation we're looking at on the screen gives us exactly what we want. So it's just that, that level of flexibility that we didn't have before. And if you see, you'll see the centre of masses are completely off centre there. If we just uh, suppress that component back again, uh, just so we can continue working with this assembly. 
One of the other areas that's seen improvement or uh, the introduction of a new style uh, here is the advanced select. So we can now select by size and a percentage of size. So you'll see here that I can drag this slider around, select by a percentage of size, say OK. And with, uh, with those selected, we can do anything that we normally would do, hide, isolate with those type of components. So it's really uh, quite a quick way to grab hold of toolbox fasteners, things like that if you want to grab hold of them. Another area uh, that's seen a level of improvement is the feature manager design tree over on the left hand side. So there is an option whereby you can scroll to the selected feature in the tree, uh, but a lot of users express concern that the feature manager design tree wouldn't necessarily return to where they originally were. So if we start at the top here, so we're currently set to the top of the feature tree and select another component, the feature tree will scroll to that item and display it. But now, if we click in the graphics area again, SolidWorks returns us to where we were in the tree. So just a much more predictable and consistent behavior there. What we've also seen is with uh, Assembly Expert, we now get more information. Uh, so here, if we click the Show button, the rebuild time for the assembly is now displayed in seconds, whereas previously it was milliseconds, so it's a little bit difficult to calculate. There's also more information displayed in here, so we can see the number of flexible sub-assemblies, virtual components and envelope components as well. Okay, the view mates command is the next thing I want to talk about, uh, and that's seen some improvements as well. So historically, we could only view mates on a component, but that's now been expanded to sketches, planes, and features. So here you'll see the view mates icon. I can see the mates that are included, uh, or any components that are mated to that sketch. We can do the same on a plane. So if we take a look at a plane, we can view the mates on a plane, like so. And if we just delve down into a little bit of a deeper level here, so I'll just hide this component and access this cut feature here. And if we just drill into that component and take a look, we can view mates on that particular cut feature and just get a better understanding of how uh, that assembly has been put together and what impact to change that feature may have on the mates and the rest of the components. Okay, so some really nice improvements at assembly level, so we'll just summarise those for you. So firstly we saw the quick access to configurations and also the flexible sub-assembly switch, uh, the ability to select by size, the improvements to the feature manager scrolling, uh, some updates to assembly expert. We also saw the view mates enhancements uh, with expanded options for those, uh, the support for exploded views with rotations, and within the mirror components, we've seen advanced and mechanical mate support uh, with the additional mate options, and also the choice as to how we mirror, whether it's about the bounding box or the center of mass. Okay, so Alex is gonna run through some costing.